what's up everybody it's your boy will carter and welcome back to my youtube channel if you guys are new here welcome to my channel before we go any further make sure if you're not already subscribed to my channel that you are hitting that subscribe button and also turning that bell notification icon button on so you get alerted each and every time i make an upload and if you guys want to check me out off of youtube you can follow me over on instagram at i'm will carter for all things my life as will carter you can find the link in the description box down below for easy lazy access because i mean come on seriously it's always fun working on candles making candles i mean come on this is what we love to do right i mean it's so fun it can sometimes be a little bit therapeutic i don't know about you but for me sometimes it is but obviously we all prefer to make candles that we actually enjoy <laughs> smelling not ones that we don't enjoy smelling even though that's an interesting position to be in because suppose there's a fragrance that most people like that you just happen to be the odd man out that doesn't like you know then you might be missing out on some candles that could actually sell very very well not to mention it's really hard i think to like really determine the real true power of a fragrance oil unless you're burning it in a candle because you know you get different hints of the notes dependent on what the candle is doing is it sitting there giving you a cold throw are you burning the candle getting a hot throw or are you getting that residual like fragrance from when you blow out the candle because all three of those stages of your candle really does it really does give you a different experience with the fragrance that you really can't get the same when you're just smelling with the test strip you know so for today's video what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take a fragrance oil that i really do not like and i'm gonna make a candle out of it and see if by burning it i have a different opinion about the fragrance oil the fragrance oil that we're gonna use for this little experiment is called marshmallow pine from the flaming candle i actually reviewed this fragrance oil over in my uh, previous video called winter wanderlust fragrance oil flaming candle review um, I reviewed the Winter Wanderlust um, sampler pack and um, this was one of the ones included and I think this was the only one that I didn't like. Bitch, I still don't like it. Hold on. Yep, don't like it still. But if I remember this correctly, I think that like this fragrance oil had like five star reviews on the Flame and Candles website, I think. But either way, someone liked it and I might even like it if I experienced it in a candle. So. We're going to make a candle with this atrocious smelling fragrance oil. I'm not excited about this. We're gonna be using a tester vessel, which is this beautiful green vessel that I have here that I made. Um, I was experimenting with some colors from Direct Colors. So let's jump on over to the table and let's see how this goes. Okay guys, so I have everything set up here, ready to go. My um, wax melter, pitcher, scale. Um, I don't really need this until the very end, obviously, but I'll leave it in here. I'll take it out before I pour the wax in, of course. Um, my um, wax melter is running out of wax. I need to refill this. Um, so it's pretty low, but more than enough to make a couple of candles. But since it's low and not all the way at the top, I don't really need that much heat to get it going. So I'm only gonna kind of leave it here on about like right in between 155, 195. Anything between like 190 and 200 is like, is where I start to like get things going. I wanna kind of take you guys over to, um, just to kind of show you guys how I measure everything out and do the math. This is my baby, my MacBook Pro 2022. Um, although I mostly use my iMac for most of this craziness, but um, just to give you guys an overview of what this is, this is a spreadsheet that I did in Numbers. Numbers is basically just the Apple version of Excel. Hold on, is this as bright as it can go? Yeah, it is, okay. So. There's a lot of math that goes into candle making, especially when you're like me, who uses multiple different waxes in one. Um, so it can be a lot of math and a lot if you're trying to do that every single time you're doing candle making and you're writing it down. And what if you have to make adjustments? Then you have to redo the math over from scratch. Well, I have everything here in formulas. So all of these, this entire section here is all formulas. And down here is all formulas. And all I have to do is just basically plug in um, these numbers at you know to what I want and it would tell me exactly how much soy wax coconut wax paraffin wax and fragrance oil that I need So let's just put it to the test right now. I'm only making one candle. So 
I'm making one candle. My jar fill capacity, I like to work in ounces. Um, I'm using eight ounces for my jar, so I'll leave it at eight. And I'm using 10% is the uh, my fragrance oil load, it's gonna be 10%. And my wax blend is 65% soy, 25% coconut, and 10% paraffin. And this, in ounces, I also have it converted into pounds if I'm working with a lot of candles at a time. So I also have a section down here that works in pounds. But on top here is in ounces exactly how much I'm gonna need of each individual wax and fragrance oil. This section down here really deals with the pitcher. This tells me the overall max capacity fill weight for my pitcher. Um, this column here kind of tells me how much space I have left based off of how many candles I'm using. So this is a little scaler so I can actually tap the numbers up and as you'll see, it'll go down telling me how much space I have left. So with the eight ounce candle, I can fit a total of exactly eight candles inside my, my pitcher. So I can make eight candles at a time with the particular pitcher I have, but I usually don't like to fill that high. I mean, no one wants to fill that high, that's ridiculous. Again, I'm only making one. And down here, it just pretty much adds everything up for me in, again, ounces and pounds. So all of this together, because as you guys know, all of my waxes are mixed together already, measured out correctly inside of the uh, wax melter. So I don't, I can't, you know, weigh out each individual wax because they're already blended. So I'll use this number here, which is a total of this here, and still the fragrance oil load obviously doesn't change because this here, as you guys can see, color, you know, I don't know if you guys can see how the colors light up, pretty much tells me that it's these three waxes added together, which is 7.27 ounces. And the remaining is 0.73 ounces of the fragrance oil. So I'm gonna work, I'm gonna be working off of this here. So if I wanted to make like five candles, I would just go into this little column here, this cell, put it, I'm making a total of five candles, it'll adjust all my numbers, and again, it'll it'll adjust how much is going into the pitcher, and it'll tell me how much space I have left in the pitcher, how much in ounces am I measuring out for wax. But again, at this big number, I would just go for pounds. I'll just go for 2.27 pounds. For my fragrance oil, this number is still really low, so I tend to work in ounces when the numbers are kind of like single digits, like three. So I work there. Um, and what's also really cool about this section down here is if I happen to be making, let's just say, 11 candles at a time, because that goes over the capacity of how much space I can hold, this cell will turn red. So then I know that, okay, I can't measure this much out because I don't have that much space in here. So, But anyway, we're working with one candle today, so let's leave it at one. So that way I'm making, I'm measuring out the right amount. So first thing I'm gonna do is just like try to wick my vessel. Um, again, this is how that would work. You guys can see it's, it's real ghetto, bitch. And at this stage, I really need something a little bit more professional, something more uniform, something more accurate. I think this is the wrong side because there is a certain side that works better than the other. Even with this little guy, you can still kind of like mess up. So I try my best not to, you know, I still try to be very careful. And then when I take it out, it seems, yep, that looks really good. Now that we finished that, I need to measure out my fragrance oil. According to my production calculator, that's what I like to call it, I need 0.73 ounces, which is gonna be most of this bottle, by the way. Bro, that still smells bad, bitch. So after measuring, I got my wax up to 198, but it, it really climbed very slowly up to 198, like very, very, very slow. So I know right now, while it's still off, it's still cooling down, which is great. So now is a good time to start pouring because once I pour and then also add my fragrance oil, the temp is gonna drop some more. And this is just, this is a good time to start working on that. It's always very hard when you're working you know, while recording because you really want to try to move fast, but still like film at the same time. And it's coming up a little slow because so I need to definitely refill my picture. So what I like to do sometimes if it's coming up too slow, you can like always kind of tilt it a little bit, but be careful because you don't want to overshoot. And I'm actually going to leave it like that because that slow is actually really doing me justice. Because I, again, I'm getting really close to the number. I still want to move very quickly because I was at 198 and I like to work with hot temperatures. Um, we're going to add in this disgusting fragrance oil now. Bitch. And 
I'm gonna stir, after, I'm gonna use my watch actually to kind of help guide me, say, one minute. So I like to, oh, so I like to use this to kind of catch the wax as I pour. Um, I'm probably not gonna need too much of that in this particular case because I'm only, I'm only pouring one candle. So I won't have to do it so much. So I'm gonna pour. And I'm not gonna bother like heat gunning this bitch or anything like that. Cause again, it's not that serious. And all that's left is to just let it sit. I'm gonna try not to let this fucking candle move i tend to let it go for about 30 minutes once i start to see a little cloud as soon as i start seeing some solidification after about 30 minutes i'll take a lid and i'll put it on just to cover as much of it as i can to eliminate any floating debris from getting in i'm gonna let this candle sit overnight and then i'll test it out the following day um the thing with my candles and my particular wax blend is, and I do think that this most of this comes from that 10% paraffin that I'm using, is that the candles gives you an excellent hot throw just within 24 hours. So, and I'm not even gonna let this sit for a full 24 hours, um, but that is the good thing about my candles is that I have a very short curing time. Um, and so obviously the longer they cure the better, but I have a very short curing time of just at minimum 24 hours before they start burning. And I know that the soy tin also plays a big part of that as well, because the soy tin is just a fantastic wax. Um, so for right now, I'm just gonna let it sit, and then tomorrow, we're gonna light it and test it. So we're gonna wrap it up and just wait for it tomorrow and see how this candle performs. Okay guys, so here we are. It has been two days since I made this here candle, the Marshmallow Pine. I know I said that I was gonna do like 24 hours overnight, but I ended up working on another project that took up a lot of time. So I never got around to like testing the candle, which is okay, you know, 48 hours is better than 24 hours. So I wanted to give my thoughts on the Marshmallow Pine. Um, she's been burning for about two and a half hours now. So, you know, this is just strictly opinion on the hot throw only because obviously the candle is performing the way that it's supposed to in terms of like my melt pool and the wick and all that stuff. Again, we don't have that issue. If I'm being totally honest, it really doesn't smell that bad. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not that bad. It really isn't. You know, okay, here's the thing. I'm getting a lot of vanilla. I'm getting a lot of sugar. It's very, very sweet. And I don't really get much of that pine note in the hot throw with the marshmallow pine. So that burnt sugary smell I was getting just out the bottle or on the test strip, I'm not getting that in the hot throw. There is some earthy undertones that I am getting. It's not pine, right? Because pine is very distinctive, but there is some earthy undertones that I'm getting and I don't like it mixed in with this, this type of sweetness. And that might be what's throwing it off for me. Um, and I guess it's just the sweetness is very overpowering when, you know, it's lit, um, but it really doesn't smell so bad. So, I mean, as a personal, like if it's me, I wouldn't like, light this throughout the day. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this candle because I don't have any intentions on lighting this again. I don't, I still don't care for the smell. But in comparison to what I was thinking about it when I was doing the reviews and I first smelt it, it's really not that bad. Nowhere near as bad as I initially thought it was. Um, so it's not a zero in a candle, it's more of a 2.5. I don't recommend you testing every single fragrance in a candle because it's really a waste of supplies. You know, just, you know, just don't do it. Maybe, maybe for um, fragrances that are really, really, really bad and you're really, really unsure of, and you're like, wait, this has some great reviews. Let me really test this one out because you're really unsure because the notes should make sense. The notes should work, but it's not working for me. Maybe in that case. But other than that, I wouldn't recommend it because in actuality, it is a waste of resources because this is a waste of candle wax. This is a waste of a wick.
that could have been used for an actual candle that I can then make profit off of, you know, but it's okay. You know, I really wanted to do this just to test and see if that theory worked that I would enjoy a fragrance in a candle versus not liking it out the bottom on the test strip. But so it was a success. I guess. Anyway, now that we are here at the end of this video, as always, uh, make sure you guys are subscribing to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Also hit that bell notification icon to get alerted for all future uploads so you are in the loop, always in the loop. And also make sure you guys go over and follow me over on my Instagram page at I'm Will Carter for all things my life as Will Carter. And with that all being said, I hope you guys have a beautiful good morning, beautiful good afternoon, and a beautiful good night. Bye-bye, guys. I'll see you guys on the next video.